thank you for for inviting me to talk about the DMC today. It's um it's actually a journey that we started as long ago as uh, 2012 when when Caleb Special Projects first started to uh, to get involved in industrial inkjet and and digital deposition. Um, and, and at that point, we actually invested in our first AM machine, which was a Stratasys uh, Fortis 400. Mm -hmm. And we'd identified opportunities around motorsport and, and sectors that we already worked in. And we also found that we were quite successful because we were able to supply a full service, not just um, a print bureau, but we were we were solving customers' problems and engineering solutions as well as making parts. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started to get involved in using metal parts as well and, and discovered quite quickly that the supply chain for that was was pretty immature and not very robust. And, and we struggled, frankly, to, to source finished, fully finished parts. So it was as early as 2013 that we kind of had, I guess, the first ideas around creating a digital manufacturing center. Um, um, but we needed funding and we needed to, uh, to find support to, to deliver it. And actually the market itself has also matured in, in that time since. We last spoke in January and I know things have moved pretty fast with the center's progress. And I can hear lots of action going on um, in the background there as well. <laughs> um, tell us what's been happening since then um, to prepare for the launch of this center. All of our equipment's installed. Um, we've got two brand new Renam uh, 500Q Renishaw machines um, mm -hmm. currently being validated uh, with uh, with various metals. Um, we've also got Projimax, our CNC machining partner, on site now, um, commissioning their DMG Mori uh, five-axis CNC machine. And of course, we brought with us all of the equipment that we had from, from KDB Special Projects Additive Manufacturing Department, which essentially is what's been spun out to create this business. The industries that we're, we're focused on, and I, and I guess we're you know, always keen to say we're not limited to the ones that we identify. Mm -hmm. um, we're always interested in other opportunities, new opportunities where additive can play a valuable um, part in solving people's problems. But, you know, there are, I guess our target sectors are the high value, um, lower volume um, areas where there's a genuine benefit to be gained by having additive manufacturing as a solution. So mm -hmm. we're looking at space, aerospace, automotive, motorsport, um, probably a bit of consumer goods and, and maybe a consumer electronics are starting to come into play as well with new materials that we're starting to get involved with. Um, so, you know, all of those sort of advanced engineering sectors and, and, you know, for us, it's really important that we're using additive manufacturing as a genuine solution for, for problems that, you know, we, we, you can't use that. There are some scenarios where, where additive isn't the right solution, mm -hmm. but um, where you're looking at reducing um, the number of parts or increasing complexity or, or light weighting, then additive uh, will, will play a part in all of those sectors. We're engineering led and that's we're, we're very proud of that and we think that's a, a significant USP. So this is a facility designed by and run by engineers who are trying to solve um, manufacturing and engineering problems. Mm -hmm. So we, in order to, to deliver solutions to our customers, we, we have a range of additive manufacturing capability in house. So we've got our Renishaw machines, our Stratasys machines, our SLA machines, um, some SLS coming on board as well. Mm -hmm. But we've also got the, the upfront services, so full engineering services, um, design, optimization, topological design, um, material science. And then downstream, we've got the heat treatment processes, the dimension post-processing finishes for polymers, but also in-house, vertically integrated into our facility, we've got CNC machining. As, as, a, as a business, one of our cultures and philosophies, if you like, is that we consider all of our suppliers to be partners. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a, a partner doesn't necessarily mean that there's a a special relationship from the supplier that we're getting some some unfair advantage from it's mm -hmm. it's about creating genuine partnerships where there's mutual benefit i mean i think we've probably all seen the advancement in, in uh, adoption of digitization over mm -hmm. the last 12, 12 months for some reason post covid you know the whole electrification of, of vehicles is, is is coming back on the scene at a greater pace um and and digitization in general and i think what we're seeing or what we're expecting to see is that the you know a, a number of businesses that have now been challenged as a result of the pandemic are reevaluating their business cases. They're reevaluating how they do things, mm -hmm. whether they're carrying the right level of stock, whether they should be looking at alternative ways of manufacturing to be more efficient. And of course, additive plays to that. Um, mm -hmm. There's there's so many benefits of additive if you have the opportunity to. Um, to redesign your business case around them, then there's significant advantages to be had, whether it be light weighting, whether it be your carbon footprint, um, mm -hmm. or whether it be your sort of stock and, and reaction to market demand, 
although we were concerned that the pandemic might have some negative impact on what we're doing, I think actually, it, you know, we're, we're fortunate now that we're probably uh, in the right place at the right time to, mm -hmm. to embrace the, the brave new world that's, that's ahead of us and advanced engineering and advanced manufacturing in the UK is going to be all part of that. I think the DMC can be a, a, a sort of a, a reference site actually mm -hmm. to what's possible that's what we'd like it to, to be i mean there's we're, we're we're fortunate that starting from the from a clean sheet of paper in the ground up that we can we can make it fully digital fully connected from the outset and we mm -hmm. don't have any legacy uh, systems that we're trying to to upgrade so we're starting from um you know in 2021 with a fully connected digital capability which we can which we can build on that on the capability that means that having distributed manufacturing, having um, localization of manufacturing as well, if you need it, but building replica sites of this as well around, around the country or around the mm -hmm. world so that you can create more local manufacturing networks that are digitally connected. Those are the sort of opportunities that have been talked about for a long time, but I think mm -hmm. start to become a reality. But also I think, you know, it's really important that we show young people what's possible um, for mm -hmm. a career and, and how exciting engineering can be as a career. And some of the exciting technologies that, that, that we get involved with here also mean you get involved in some pretty exciting sectors to work in. So, you know, being an engineer gives you a lot of opportunity and we, we want to be able to communicate that to young people, show them what's possible, uh, show them the sort of things that we get involved with and hopefully inspire them to, uh, to choose engineering as a career absolutely productions our focus and we want to create um a, you know, we want to demonstrate that additive manufacturing can be series production of parts mm -hmm. and components for, for customers and there's lots of opportunities in automotive and, and, and aerospace to do that but also um, by being involved with the customers quite early on of course you have the ability to also impact on their understanding of how jigs and fixtures can be designed or composite tooling using additive or even dare i say the good old-fashioned uh, use of using additive for prototyping they, they they used to say the sky's the limit but um i don't think it is anymore so i think we can have a dmc a digital manufacturing facility in space servicing the uh, the new space space networks that are going on so you know it might sound silly but actually there's a real possibility that we're going to have manufacturing in space in the future there's a lot going on around um uh, space activities so that would be cool to have a dmc uh, on another planet that would be really good um but back to the uk you know and what is to do for british manufacturing localization is is everything at the moment having a uk supply chain that's that's effective and um and also reduces carbon footprint of your business by not having to to move too many parts around the world is fantastic um but i think what we're really good at in the uk is is innovation and, and advanced engineering um and, and this is a good example of that. It's not only a good example of it, it's in, uh, it's in the heart of a, a very high tech uh, area of the country around the Silverstone Technology Cluster. So um, I think it should, should um, talk volumes for, for how uh, innovative and, and ambitious and, uh, and creative the UK is and UK engineers are.